Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Darylin and today we are going to be talking about one of my favorite topics which is making predictions about upcoming plant trends in the new year. If you're an OG uh, channel subscriber, first of all, thank you so much. But secondly, you probably remember when we did this last year. I just think it's fun because every year when we look back, there's always identifiable trends of kind of like how the year went and so it's fun to kind of look forward half of this stuff is probably going to be wrong but we're going to do it anyway because it's my channel and i can do what i want so i guess the first thing that i kind of want to bring up is that i really think that 2023 is going to be a transitional year in the plant community what do i mean by that well it's funny because here at the end of 2022 looking back over the year and everything that's happened we're in such a different place as a community so many things have happened at the beginning of 2022 a lot of plant prices were still super sky high and the economy was in a completely different place the geopolitical like situation abroad was a lot more stable gas prices were lower just everything was different. Now we're combating a lot of inflation worldwide. And as a result, everything is more expensive. And people are just not able to have as much disposable income to buy luxury items with. And if you uh, remember my plant market video from last year, you'll know that I am of the opinion that house plants are luxury items. And that is being proven to be true by people's spending habits now that we have a lot more inflation and the economy is kind of contracting. So one of the ways that we're in a transition right now is that plant prices are just going to go down continually. We probably will never see prices the way that we did um, like that ever again because just so many things have changed. There's just so many more uh, producers out there. So many more people have plants that they are gonna sell out of their houses to make a little extra money. It's just not gonna ever get back to that level of scarcity that we were at during the pandemic because of all of those kind of like economic pressures. Also part of these like kind of changing conditions is like, people are leaving the plant community you see a lot of like collection wide purges uh where people are selling their plants for like bargain 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 prices like not making a profit on them at all you know because like life just kind of goes on at this point people have been plant collecting for a number of years and things come up you need to move you need to spend more time at work you have a kid you are just not able to keep up with all of the maintenance you're wanting to travel more you can't afford to have all the plants anymore like I've said a number of times in many videos that you know the price of a plant is not just the price it costs to buy the plant keeping up with the maintenance on a lot of these plants is really expensive especially water like if your water bill is super high I mean I probably use like six gallons of water a week just to water my plants that doesn't include if I need to like flush my semi-hydro setups or anything like that I could totally see why people are leaving the hobby or or maybe they've just lost interest maybe they're just overwhelmed maybe they're dealing with like a huge collection-wide pest outbreak and the time and effort and money to resolve that is just not something that they have you know handy for them to be able to do so as a result of people leaving the hobby it's just gonna be kind of a different community I don't know it'll be interesting to see like there's been an influx of people that kind of all started collecting around the same time in 2019 that have all kind of like gone through their plant journey together and so there's not as many beginners in the community as there kind of have been over the past few years so i think just kind of things are going to change and the focus is going to change which can be a good thing you know because of the huge amount of supply that's available on the market right now with plants i do think 2023 is probably going to be like the best time for a long time to get your wish list plants for the cheapest possible price. I do think that once uh, a lot of these people who are leaving the hobby forever are all exiting at the same time and they've liquidated everything and then a lot of people end up leaving selling plants because it's just not worth it to them anymore because they can't get the prices that they're used to. There is gonna be this transition from everything being hyper accessible for really reasonable prices to prices on things still being like pretty reasonable but but things are going to start to be difficult to find again. I wouldn't expect to be able to just put an ISO in any Facebook group for any plan and just be able to find it 
again after this kind of mass exodus concludes. So I do think in the long run, this is not going to be a bad thing for the planet community. I think that the people who are like really in it for the long term, because it's like a long term special interest are going to stick around. And you know, of course, people may come back once they get to a point where they're they're ready to pick it up again. But for that reason, like I think that this is a big transitional year and a year from now the plant community just it's gonna look really different you know like I even have started going to like in-person events and they used to be so popular and crowded back like a year ago a year and a half ago and now you go and it's so much more chill so I I really do think that we're transitioning in the community and it will be interesting to see kind of what ends up coming out of that so the next trend that I expect to see going into 2023 and beyond is kind of a de-emphasis on kind of gotta catch them all collecting and being really focused on having the most varieties of plants and the biggest collections and like house plant tours showing like hundreds of plants to more of like developing our skills as plant keepers, as aeroiders, as horticulturalists. So I expect to see a lot more content that goes over like care innovations and growing hacks and pest control and like fertilizer and just more of that kind of like high like information level content more so than just like 10 varieties of plants that you should try if you're a beginner. I think that there's not that many beginners in the community right now and I mean like I could be wrong but a few years ago huge influx of, of beginners and now I think a lot of people have had their plants for like four or five years and are are kind of like thinking about okay like where do I take this from here where do I go next how do I continue to grow haha <laughs> pun intended as a plant person and still keep it fun and interesting and experiment I do think that that's gonna become the emphasis like you're gonna see more discourse on those kinds of things in plant groups than like I'm looking for this plant or you know pictures of plants I, I think that it'll be interesting I think that we're, we're heading into a new phase of like development as a community I think that people are going to start showing off their really big plants, talking about their growth stories with those plants. I think that we're also going to see things like long-term projects. Last year, I talked about how I thought big terrarium builds were going to be popular, and you did see some of that. I do think that that is going to continue to be something that certain people are going to be able to do, you know, the ones that have space for it. So I'm looking forward to it. I think this is going to be interesting, and I'm excited to learn tons and tons of new things from other people. Maybe that kind of more like nerdy, like info heavy type content and discourse will have a chance to bubble up to the top of the pile in the community. And I'm really excited to see all of the fun and interesting information that everyone has learned by trial and error and like wants to now share with everybody else in the community. Next, I think that we're also going to see a trend towards cleaning up like the planty aesthetic we see in people's spaces. Planty max maximalism so that like home decor aesthetic where it's just like tons of plants everywhere and they're overgrowing and climbing up the walls I do think is a little bit of an outdated home decor aesthetic a lot of people don't talk about how one of the reasons that the plant boom happened was because it was a coincidence that in about 2018 2019 right before COVID hit the trendy home decor trend was this outside meets inside planty maximalism and a lot of people got into plants because they liked that decor aesthetic and then that just led to them trying to figure out how to take care of the plants and one thing led to another and then COVID hit and then it was like oh my god I can have a million plants and then I do think now um kind of the decor aesthetics are updating a little bit and you're not seeing as many things that are so maximalistic with so many plants I do think that the folks that are still in the hobby are also going to start like scaling back and kind of really curating the plants that they have and trying to make their spaces look really nice and curated but also authentic to the kinds of things that they like to look at to make their spaces cozy. You know, a lot of us now 
that have been uh, plant collecting for like five or six years. Like we started when we were in our 20s, but like now we're in our early mid 30s. And it's like, okay, like I want to have like a nice house, a nice put together living space. I like to have friends over. I want to have people over for dinner. I want to have people be able to come and stay with me. And, you know, having like racks of plants on every single bare wall in my house just isn't going to work for me anymore. So I do think we're going to start to see that. But I think it's actually kind of cool because you're going to see all kinds of cool like planty decor hacks, different ways to display your plants, things that are creative, things that like look really nice as like an accent to plants. I think we're going to see, um, you know, like more decorative pottery and it's going to be interesting. I also think we're going to see people moving more of their plants outdoors. And I think that is actually kind of cool because I do know, at least for me, when I started with my plant collecting with my aeroids, I really treated them with kid gloves and I was super, super like nervous and was a total helicopter plant mom. And now I'm like moving my plants outside year round because I'm fortunate I don't live anywhere where we have um, freezing temperatures. So my aeroids are fine outside year round. And for the most part, they're doing better. <laughs> the ones that are outside are doing better than the ones that are inside. So I think those are the kinds of things that people are going to start doing, like just like chilling out a little bit, then, you know, just like kind of sharing the knowledge of, of how to like clean up their aesthetic and their tips and tricks for like feeling like you have a planty space that's still functional. I can't wait to see that. I really hope that that is apparent this year because I like want to do that, but I'm also terrible at it. I'm a, like a magpie and I like just always want more, but then I don't like the sum of all the things that I like individually. So restraint is, uh, is something I'm excited to hopefully pick up from other people <laughs> this year. <laughs> All right, so the next thing, and this is like dovetailing really well off of the last one, is I do think we are going to see kind of a move towards more simplification of plant keeping. I do think that we're gonna see a resurgence of some of the low maintenance, easy care, kind of classic plants that in the past maybe got pushed aside in favor of some things that are a little bit more flashy. I think there's gonna be a lot of people looking for tips on how to simplify their plant care, how to make things easier for themselves. I do think we're going to see a reversion towards people keeping their plants in soil because it is just really easy. It's, it is, it's easier than keeping your plants in semi-hydro and it's cheaper, especially when your plants are big. Like it is so much work to keep big plants in semi-hydro because A, all of that semi-hydro substrate, especially if you're using Lechuza Pond, is super expensive. B, it's really difficult to find like semi-hydro pots that are big enough for large plants, especially for a reasonable price. And then lastly, it's really difficult to move large hydroponic setups around so um, that you can flush the substrate because they're heavy and they're just cumbersome. I'm not saying it's impossible and I'm sure there's people out there who have large plants in semi-hydro that do amazing. It's a difficult thing to manage if you aren't like really savvy with it. So I do expect that we will see people as their plants grow larger moving towards putting them into soil, which as long as you have like the right soil mixture for the type of plant that you have and your conditions and the pot you're gonna use and everything. Soil is super easy. And I think now there's so much more information out there about soil that it's easier to figure out what kind of soil situation you wanna use so that your plant will thrive and it'll just be like way less work for you. I mean, the other thing is like semi-hydroponic systems take so much water, my dudes. I just don't know how sustainable in the long run it would be for me to have like a hundred plants in semi-hydro because I already use like six gallons of water a week just to water everything. And when you flush semi-hydro plants, like you have to really hose them down. Rinsing Lechuza Pond and rinsing Leca when it's brand new, when you're, you know, first putting a plant in, it also takes a lot of water. You know, in the past, like I have like kind of had an iffy opinion on soil just because for whatever reason, I do think it is easier to keep small plants in semi-hydro, but large plants, so much easier to use soil. And I do think that we're going to start seeing people start to favor, you know, good old fashioned ceramic pots because they are a much more affordable option 
for a large plant than like a semi hydro planter and they're also heavy enough that like a really big top heavy plant won't tip over in them and they're reusable you know like unless you break it a ceramic pot is always going to be reusable so I do think that we are going to start to see like a, a back to basics kind of renaissance with uh, soil and substrate. I also do think too that people are going to start appreciating uh, like natural sunlight more. I do think a lot of people did try and use grow lights on a lot of their plants and those are they're, they're great for the winter time they do help but like nothing in my experience is better than real sunlight like the plants that I have in real sunlight next to my windows they do way better than the plants that just get light from the grow lights and it's funny because we all for a long time like tried to just be like these super vigilant plant parents and like do everything amazing 100% right yeah it turns out like sometimes just simple like soil real sunlight next to a window setup is you know, what's going to work the best. So that is kind of funny. Could have saved myself a lot, a lot of money on that one, but you live and you learn. And um, I also think we're going to see a lot of people kind of ditching their mills bows and their humidity setups for plants that are just going to be okay living out in open air. I do understand that for some people that's not really an option because of where they live, but for the most part, most aeroids, like as long as you get them established well, they transition to reasonable humidity fairly well. Like if you can keep your, your humidity at 50%, you can grow almost any aeroid. Like emphasis on almost because there are definitely exceptions to that, but most of them can be acclimated to grow in about 50% humidity. I mean, in my house, it's, you know, sometimes it gets down to like 35, depending on the time of year. I've got just about every variety of anthurium you could imagine out in my house. I've got all my, you know, my philodendrons. I've got syngonium. I've got all kinds of stuff. And alocasia and like for the most part they all do fine so I do think that people are going to stop babying their plants so much and start just feeling like hey you either need to figure it out in my environment that I can give you if you can't thrive in this fast-paced environment then you gotta go gotta go I think that it's just kind of like time for some of us to kind of like chill out a little bit and take a step back and just start to not beat ourselves up if like we can't make it work with a certain plant and like we have to you know rearrange our house to have a million humidity tents for plants our space needs to be enjoyable for us to inhabit too and the plants are fun but we don't need to go too crazy um, especially since even if you keep a plant super duper happy in a humidity setup beyond and just letting it get acclimated and established, eventually it's gonna outgrow it. And then what are you gonna do? You're gonna have to take it out and if it dies, it dies, you know? So I think that we're gonna see a movement towards just simplifying going forward too. And then lastly, I genuinely think that 2023 is going to be the year of Anthurium. That is correct. I think that Anthurium are about to enter their main character era in the plant community. And I say this because there is like a subset of certain types of Anthurium that I have not seen the prices fluctuate downward. <laughs> decrease the same that I've seen in almost every other type of plant in the aeroid world and thurium are still going strong there's a really robust community of people collecting them there's certain types specifically that are what I'm referring to here like obviously you're not going to get like triple digits for any old anthurium anymore but uh especially the super dark ones and the hybrids that are from like prestigious breeders are still very very much sought after and coveted going into 2023 some of them like the doc block anthurium doc block is a, a anthurium breeder he has a whole bunch of different like hybrids and varieties um but like the f2 the zara x michelle they come out with these beautiful like bright purple leaves when they first put the leaf out the anthurium ace of spades has been around forever a lot of the anthurium papillae laminum uh lineages still highly sought after anthurium dreslery hybrids are still super sought after or like the black velvet eastern panama very very sought after especially if you you can cross it with like the like the dreslery rio guanche i think is how you pronounce it uh and then anthurium carla blackii still extremely sought 
sought after. Yeah, the ones that are really sought after are the ones that you can hybridize. Like a lot of people have been getting really into pollinating their anthurium and fluorescences. And you see people selling like their DIY hybrids on Facebook and groups all the time. And it's really fun because, you know, you can get seeds for really, really reasonable. You know, like I see people selling seeds of things like Queen Anthurium X Forgetii or, or, or something classic like that for like $25 a seed or, you know, all the way up to you see like um, Dreslery X RLS FX for like a few hundred dollars per seed. So yeah, I think the Anthurium community is still very much alive and kicking very much going strong. I don't expect that to slow down. I expect just like more and more hybrids to continue to come out. I do think that eventually the all of the hybrids may start to not be as as valuable and as expensive, but the pure species plants to use for hybridization will probably stay really expensive and stay very, very cool. So yeah, those are my little predictions for 2023. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have other predictions, what you think is going to happen. I know this year it wasn't very focused on like plants that are going to come out. It was kind of more just like attitudes and changes. So if you think or you know of a plant and like specifically you think is going to be really popular in 2023, like for sure let us know in the comments because I would love to check that out. And yeah, other than that, that's going to be it for me for today. Thank you so much for chilling with me and I will see you in my next one. Bye!